A circuit breaker is an electrical device that can very quickly cut off the current if it is going to hurt the circuit. Do you think you have some habits which may be impacting negatively your efforts to achieve your healthy weight? And more importantly, can surgery be a circuit breaker for all those negative patterns that are not serving you. In this interview, you're going to find some amazing golden nuggets that Emanuela presents that is going to act like a circuit breaker and has the potential to transform your life for good. Hi everybody, uh, this is Dr. Arun Deer here and I've got the beautiful Emanuela here with me. Emanuela is a past patient of mine, but we have really connected uh, well because I've been really pleased to see her journey and um, she has uh, some amazing insights to offer, which I think every one of us will learn from because it's always a journey of learning growing collectively and then helping others and serving others. So thank you, Emanuela, for your time. Um, may I begin by asking you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, you know, who you are in terms of, I know you are a mom and all of that, but tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, who you are and what was your pain point prior to that uh, decision that you made maybe one day that, you know, I have to do something about my weight. Okay. Well, firstly, thank you for having me on. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to give back to this community, which has given me so much. Um, so honestly, who am I? I am a someone who is really in love with life. I am all about, you know, creating opportunities for myself learning, growing and experiencing all it has to give. And um, in essence, that's who I am. You know, I, I'm a very kind of vulnerable and sensitive person who wears what she feels on her um, and isn't afraid to show people. Um, but I think, you know, you asked me what, what, what are my pain points was um, in coming, you know, in making the decision or coming to, um, I suppose, having the weight. And really that the weight for me really held me back from fully being the person I felt like I was inside. So as much as I tried and tried on my own to, to just really, um, you know, it's like that butterfly who's a cocoon and, you know, wants to become the butterfly, but struggles to get out of the cocoon. That was like the weight for me. It really was holding me back. Um, and the impact that weight has on your self-worth, self-esteem, um, after hundreds of failed attempts to lose weight is really significant. Uh, and so really this process for me was about stepping into myself and fully trying to um, lose the shackles of the past and really moving forward um, and being able to fulfill who I feel like I, I truly am. So was there, if I can just ask you, was there a point in time where you said like, you know, I think you were telling me about just a moment ago before we started the recording is that you were wearing an apron from, uh, you know, I saw a photo of yours and the befores and afters kind of things. So was there a journey, a point in that journey that said, nope, I'm not prepared to accept it anymore? You know, what was that if we could just, uh, you know, if you're happy to share it with us, of course. Sure. I think there was, there's been many, many points that have led me to ultimately make the decision um, to absolutely change my life. But there was a couple of points and I can tell you the story about the uh, um, uh, wearing this apron. I was doing a fundraiser at work for cancer research. And as part of that, someone bought me this apron uh, to wear on the day. And usually, um, you know, I would not want to be putting something tight around my body. And there was this moment when someone said, Emmanuel, why are you wearing the apron? And I'm like, you're right. Why am I not wearing the apron? I went and got it and I put it on in front of everyone. And I stood there with my hands on my hips and just started laughing. It was just like this, yeah. this freedom and relief. And they took a photo and that's it's the a photo, photo you're talking photo, about. Yeah. You could see me smiling. I think you could really see in that photo just 
hey, this is me. I'm so yeah. proud of this. Hey, you know, there's nothing holding me back here. That's right. Um, and th- and that, that's the photo you talk of. But yeah. um, there's been so many moments. And I think before I came to see you, Arun, um, I was working with an endocrinologist, amazing human being, but he tried so many ways to help. And mm. I remember that last consult, we sat there and, and he said, I think we need to do something different. There mm. needs to be something different. Mm. And I know someone who I believe you would get along with really well. Oh. <laughs> and he was speaking about you. Oh, <laughs> and I want God. you to just go and have a talk to him and see what comes of that conversation. Oh. And then it was ultimately having that conversation with you when we were talking. And, and you know, I was kind of a bit undecided. I was kind of like, oh, well, you know, surely I could just go another diet. I could try mm. again. I could. And you sat there and you looked at me and you said, you know, we... The goal is to get people off medication. And I'd been on a long-term course of medication to try and lose weight. And you Mm. said, our goal is to get people off medication, not on medication. And when you've got to lose 50 or 60 kilos, you need some support with that. And that's where where we come in. Mm. And when you said that, I thought, I do need support. You're right. I can't keep doing the same old thing and getting the same old result. It just Mm. needs to change. No, no, that's that's yeah. true. And I think, you know, I, I totally acknowledge when people come to the doorstep of surgery, mm. uh, they have tried everything. Who wants surgery? Hey, it's like painful, it's risky, it's expensive okay. and all of that. So nobody wants it. No. But I guess there comes a point where you say, you know what, I'm prepared to do this because I think it creates a big emotional impact on changing your old patterns. It does. It so does. if I can ask you, Emanuela, what were your old patterns that were not serving you now when you can look back? See, now where you are, you're almost 12 months post your gastric sleeve surgery, right? Mm-hmm. And what are what do you see about the old Emanuela that you can look back and say, you know, those were the behaviors that were not serving you? Yeah. Okay. So what, so if I reflect back on who I was before surgery, Mm. then after lots of failed attempts, there is a sense that you build up this learnt hopelessness. This sense of, I cannot do this. There is no way I can achieve this. This is not possible. This is just who I am. I'm addicted to food. I will habitually overeat. I will manage my emotions with food. and 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 I just can't break out of that. And you start Mm. to accept that on some level, you start buying that as the truth. And that was, they were some of my challenges. And and certainly when I came to your door, that's where I was. I didn't Mm. want to believe it, but it was true. I Mm. really did believe that I could, could not achieve and could not make the appropriate changes. And what bariatric surgery has allowed me to do, it's like when you meditate, meditation allows you the space between you and the reaction. So it Mm. starts creating this gap. I feel like that about bariatric surgery. Surgery gives you this space between you, what your reactions are to things and the new choices you can make, the restriction um, and just some of the things that it triggers within you when you have surgery really allow you the opportunity to confront some of those things that perhaps you've learned to ignore Mm. Um, and also learned as normal when they are not normal it's just Mm. like a smoker who says oh well you know I keep smoking because because it really doesn't affect my health but the smoker really has forgotten what it feels like to feel amazing yeah to have lungs with no with no smoke in them and it's the same yeah it's the same with eating you forget what it really is like to have a healthy vibrant life mm, that's so beautifully put actually emanuela like you know learn helplessness and you know i truly believe that one of my mentors said we don't die we kill ourselves yeah you know we don't die but the and, same thing uh, is we kill ourselves a lot sooner than when it went then we're yeah. even when we're dead <laughs> exactly you know so yeah. i think this is really good so you mentioned something about tools, you know, that bariatric surgery has offered you a tool. Tell yeah. me, how has the gastric sleeve helped you? What tools did you personally use in order to create this successful mm. journey for yourself? What habits in specific? Yeah. I want to know for our listeners what tips they can take out of this. Sure. So bariatric surgery for me um it, it, it helped me realize that I needed to create habits to support change. 
But first of all, I needed to decide the person who I wanted to be. Mm. So I started there. So who do I want to be? So for me, I want to build habits of support, the identity of someone who cares about their physical and mental health. This is my what drives me every single day. Um, and so I focus on things like portion control, listening to my hunger and fullness cues. It's really important for someone who's overeaten all their lives mm. um, and snacked to manage emotions of, of, of stress, of, of boredom, of whatever. Um, mindful eating, you know, just being able to sit down and be with food no matter what it is, you know, and not making things wrong or right. Uh, you know, planning is a really big one, planning high protein, good nutritious meals. Um, and exercise. Exercise is so un overrated and underrated all at the same time. You know, um, people talk about it as a way to, you know, if I exercise, it means I get to eat more, but I don't look at it that way. I exercise because it, it de-stresses me and that's one of my health <laughs> values you know to be less stress it, mm. it helps me uh, increase my metabolism so that i can continue to function well so exercise and joyful movement is a is a really important one sleep is so underrated um you know i've really been focusing on my sleep making sure i sleep seven or eight hours a day um which again helps manage my stress i even eat less when i sleep more you know it it was one of the really bad habit i had before um and stress management you know is 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 another really major one but i think what it boils down to arun is identify who you want to be so what what is your identity and then putting mm. in place all those habits and rituals that support that and let that drive you every day and and that's so many golden nuggets that you've given there you know i often say pain pushes until the vision pulls yeah. So pain pushed you, pain pushed you until the door of surgery. And yeah. then you said, you know what? I have to set a vision for myself. And I think even in the holy books, they say, if a civilization or if a generation does not have a vision, they perish. Yeah, that's right. That's so, so true. Yeah, they perish because there's no vision, yeah. you know. So that's yeah. the important of vision, which is the goal, which is what you are seeking to be. So yeah. can I ask you any tools that you use to develop that vision, like a vision board or did yeah. you have a journal? Can you can you share something with our listeners? Yeah. So there's a few things that I do do. So I do journal. Um, I do do gratitude. So gratitude every day around because look, weight loss is a roller coaster and life is a roller coaster. So it's important to stay focused on some of the good, amazing things. And some days you feel like there is none. And mm. it might be simpler saying, I am grateful for the bed I had to lie in last night and sleep restfully. It could wow. be something as simple as that. Um, uh, also, habit tracking is a really big one. Um, so uh, setting out habits for the month and goals for the month and tracking those. Uh, because, Can you give us some example, like, you know, uh, just for our listeners, what kind of habits did you focus on? Yeah. So if there's, you know, for example, food habits might be around having so much protein a day, ensuring I have, you know, two liters of water. It could be something like increasing my fiber because I have struggled with mm. constipation, for example. So tracking yeah. against that. Then there's things like having, making sure I stand 12, you know, every hour I'm standing from my desk rather than sitting down because I work at a computer all day. Correct. Um, walking 10,000 steps a day, but doing mm. it at a certain time in the morning. And I, I basically do something like it's called um, habit stacking. So when I walk in the morning, that triggers me to have a healthy meal. That triggers me to mm. read for 10 minutes, something to nurture my soul in the morning. So by the time I sit down to work, I feel really fulfilled already. Mm. Um, so all those types of habits um, that you track against need to, again, support this identity that you want um, for yourself. Um, going to bed at a certain time of night. What time and, do you go to bed, Emanuela? Yeah, so really? my goal is 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh, okay. And do you hit that goal most nights? Most nights. Uh, oh, sometimes good. on the weekend, if I have a movie night with my husband, I might not. Yeah, so yeah. I try and do that. Of um, course, of course. And what so time do you get up in the morning? So at seven o'clock, um, I get up and oh, that's absolutely. when I get dressed and go for my walk. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Lovely, you know, look, I think those, those are really amazing tools. One one thing that I want to, I'm curious to find out because this has been my belief, okay? Yes. And again, we uh, sometimes our beliefs are hard to prove, but what I say is that 
I believe emotional hurts from the past have got a significant contribution to an individual's weight unless we have the ability to let go and I know this is a sensitive topic and I know this is sensitive for many of us sure. because we've all gone through some sort of a hurt guilt shame blame or things like that uh, but do you feel that contributes to and I don't want to be personal here I just want to share your insights that you know do you feel that emotional trauma contributes to how we become in yeah. terms of treating ourselves i'm happy to share on this because i think that i'm not unique you know we've all experienced trauma and i certainly did as a young child and i remember one of my very early um experiences around food um, was i would go to the supermarket and buy a bag of cookies and eat them mm. until i finished them mm. and what was that about? That was me about trying to control my situation because what I was experiencing was so out of control. And as a child, I couldn't control it. Mm. So food for me became a way of trying to control my environment and my circumstance. Mm. And that carried through. And then food became a way of coping. Mm. But food became my friend when I was alone. It was always was there for you. It was always there for me. Correct. So, so these are real, real things. And, mm. um, you know, I work, I've worked with a psychologist during this process and I will continue to because I think it, it's, it's not enough just to eat well. It, yeah. it is a huge part of it. It's not enough just to exercise. Yeah. Your mind really needs to be congruent with what you're trying to do and, and not try and control because this is the other thing I've learned, Arun. It's not about controlling your situation but rather about having enough awareness around it when it's getting out of track and trying to, you know, compassionately bring yourself back mm. to where you want to be, yeah. not through through shame or, or you Blame know. Blame or guilt yes, or whatever, yeah. But through compassion and yeah. understanding that, that suffering is so real and normal and, yeah. and that there needs to be a way that we can bring ourselves back with love. Yeah. And, and that's part of my and, journey and my struggle. Yeah. Uh, and I can I hear this in your voice and in your words that, you know, bariatric surgery primed you to recognize and become aware of all these things, you know, it create and we know through the gut brain axis that happens, uh, the shift that happens with bariatric surgery, that yeah. it create primes your brain and it allows you to start creating as we call the new you. And, well, it's and, like a circuit breaker, it feels like. Exactly. It's a circuit breaker. It breaks the vicious cycle. So, yes. so, so true. Yes. Absolutely. And Emanuela, so I tell you, this is amazing conversation. I know it could go on for a very long time. But hey, uh, I am thoroughly grateful to you for such an amazing story that you shared with us about your sort of progress. Tell me, where can people find you and connect with you? Just, uh, uh, you know, so that they can follow you, they can oh. get inspiration from your journey. So just share that with us, please, before we say goodbye. Okay, well, I am on Instagram and part of my journey is to give back to the community that's been so kind to me. So um, I'm always happy to get messages and, and provide people with some, I don't know, insights. Uh, so feel free to message me at emsms underscore vsg underscore diary. Oh, okay. Okay. That's easy. We'll put that in the show notes as well of this video. Absolutely. And um, awesome. Is that uh, what your main platform is? Instagram anywhere else? Do you, do people find you anywhere else? Or No, that's, that's, that's my main platform for that's this particular platform. journey. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, Emanuela, thank you so much. It is thank a you. delight speaking to you. And thank you again for sharing all of that with us. Oh, thank you. It's been such a pleasure. And uh, yeah, thank you to all your support, for all your support. And your team's been amazing too. So thanks.